go on. All right, what's going on, Birdland? Bob's here, <clears throat> and uh, unfortunately, the Baltimore Orioles fell to the Cincinnati Reds, eleven to seven, and fall to forty-eight and thirty-one. Currently, they're four and a half games out of first place with the Tampa Bay Rays. But the good news is that currently, uh, at the time of this video, the Rays are losing two to nothing to uh, the Diamondbacks out in Phoenix. So, bottom seven, two nothing Arizona. So. Hopefully, Arizona will hold out. Baltimore can stay within four of uh, Tampa Bay. But let's talk about the O's and Cincinnati. They got a little piece of humble pie. Uh, Cincinnati comes in, takes two out of three games from the Birds. Lots of late nights. Obviously, we've had the two rain delays. And then, you know, tonight's ball game goes into extra innings. And it's a tough game to watch. I mean, Kyle Gibson uh, starts the game, and he gets touched up for six innings or six runs, excuse me, in the first two innings. You know, fortunately, Baltimore was able to strike back in the bottom of the first, but we started off, you know, on the wrong foot. And uh, that's back-to-back -back outings where Gibson didn't pitch well. So he's going to have to clean some things up and uh, get back to his old ways if the birds are uh, going to be successful this year. Hey, before we get too much more into the uh, breakdown of the game, Hey, like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment down in the comment section about what you thought of the series, what you thought about this ball game, um, some of the deficiencies or even some of the things that you like to see. The announced attendance was 21,152. It's about 46% capacity at Camden. But without further ado, uh, the announced attendance was 21,152. It's about 46% capacity at Camden. Um, and then we'll go over the box score. Box score, Cincinnati had 11 runs, obviously within 10 innings. 16 hits, zero errors. Baltimore had seven runs on 10 hits and had two errors. And then like I said earlier, Cincinnati scored six runs in the first two. Baltimore scored four in the first. And then Baltimore had the big inning in the eighth to send it into extras, uh, basically on Frazier's home run. So let's look at uh, how the, the Orioles did uh, behind the plate. Let's look at that real quick and see how the birds did. So Cedric Mullins went one for five. Uh, he had one K. Uh, Rutschman had a decent night. He uh, went two for five. Santander went 0 for five with two Ks. Uh, Ryan O'Hearn, uh, he had the first ribby. He went one for five with a ribby and a run. Austin Hayes went one for four uh, with a walk. Gunnar Henderson uh, went one for four. He had the big triple. In the first, he also had one, wa one walk, but he also struck out three times. Um, Hicks went one for four with a walk and a K. Also had a run. Uh, Jordan Westberg continued to, to impress for the most part. He went two for five with one ribby, one run. Uh, he did strike out one time. He's batting 417 just for, you know, everybody's uh, information. So against the Cincinnati Reds, the kid has batted. He's batting 417 right now. Small sample size, I get it, but I think he's definitely earned uh, a spot on the roster right now, and he needs to continue to play. And then, uh, like we, we talked about earlier, Frazier went uh, one for two with a two-run shot in the eighth that uh, had Camden rocking for a while. He also had two walks. So it was a big home run, big spot. Um, but uh, despite his heroics, um, you know, the birds weren't able to hold on. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. But uh, it's an unfortunate loss. Uh, Cincinnati's a good baseball team. Like I said, the birds, I think this series, as good as Cincinnati is, obviously you need to get two out of three at home, and they were unable to do that. So I think that uh, the Orioles kind of, you know, they, they, they were a little exposed into we still have some things that we have to work on um, if we're going to legitimately be World Series contenders. There's a, there's a couple of things that we need to fix and tighten up. And hey, this is one series. You know, it happens. They have the off day tomorrow. Uh, they get another three-game set against the Twins uh, starting on the 30th. So they'll have a, a, a chance to bounce back. Day to kind of reflect, uh, maybe get their bearings about them. And then uh, they'll be hosting Minnesota. We'll see if we can right this ship. But going into the game real quick, Reds 11, Baltimore 7. They touched up Gibby for three. 
uh, in the very first inning. So Baltimore is already playing for behind. Fortunately, in the bottom of the first, the O's were able to score four, excuse me. And uh, one of the big reasons is Henderson's triple. It's a base clearing triple in the uh, bottom of the first. So big inning, they bounce back. And then so after Gibby gives up three, Baltimore answers with four. And you think, okay, you know, they've covered. Maybe Gibson will turn things around. No, he relinquishes three more, three more runs. And next thing you know, the birds are down 6-4. And that kind of held for a while throughout the game. Uh, there wasn't much offense until, unfortunately, it'll, let me see. Let me get this correct. Let me get this correct. Yeah, McLean, yeah, in the eighth. Okay, that's when they, uh, McLean grounded out the first and Benson scored and Frito went to second. Hey, I will say this too. Fredo was, he was a thorn in Baltimore side this series. Um, he was a thorn in Baltimore side, in Baltimore side, and there was no, no bigger time when he was a thorn in Baltimore side than when he hit that stinking two run shot in the top of the eighth. So, the mountain comes in. It's seven to seven. Well, let's pref let's preface it by this. You know, Baltimore's down seven to five. Um, runner on first. Adam Frazier comes up and hits a stinking just clutch. And he's he comes in in the clutch, man. He's made some real clutch hits. And uh, I mean, he smacks one onto the flag court. The birds tie it up at seven. And then uh, Felix Bautista comes in. You know, he he works through a little traffic. It's kind of like, oh man, I think they had second and third with one out, and uh, Felix is able to get out of there unscathed, keep it seven to seven. And Baltimore was unable to do anything anything in the bottom of the uh, ninth. So we go into the tenth, and Keegan Aiken comes out. Now I don't know if you guys can remember, but a couple of probably a week ago, I was saying you know that it's about time for him to get sent down. Well, yesterday he actually had a decent outing. I think he uh, went a third, two Ks, and I got somebody out on a ground out. So unscathed through one, hey, he pitched all right, you know. Well, he comes in at a big spot, top of the 10th, and I mean, they just tagged him. From the get-go, it, uh, it was not pretty. I mean, they just, you know, and, and I'm not going to say that he got any help on the defensive side either. When Benson tripled to right and Newman scored, uh, Santander, you know, the way it looked like he tracked the ball, he kind of, he flattened out his track to the baseball. The ball got in over his head. It was still going to be a tough catch, but possibly, you know, you catch that baseball and at least the runner only goes from second to third and you got one out. Like I said, tough catch, I get it, but uh, I think his angle to the ball was, uh, was not the best and the ball ended up getting over his head. And then, like, uh, full count. I think Fredo worked the count full on the next one with Benson. Benson on third, and I mean, it was a beautiful piece of hitting. You got to give the guy credit. I was talking to my family about it when it when it happened. That's full count. Um, he keeps his hands in and gets the barrel to the ball, and I mean, he puts it right over the scoreboard out and right, and um, it it was a it was a good hit. I mean, you gotta gotta kind of gotta give credit where credit is due. Keegan Aiken didn't necessarily put that ball in a bad spot per se. But Fredo just made a good hit, and, you know, he had some real good ABs this entire series. He was a thorn in Baltimore's side. So Keegan Aiken ends up getting McLean to K, and then, and then Maley doubles the center, and he's safe at third on a fielding error by uh, Mullen. So, you know, right after that ball gets hit over Santander's head, uh, Benson triples <clears throat> to right. Uh, with the poor angle another one gets hit over there and Sandander is not able to he's not able to track the ball gets in over his head uh, ricochets off the wall the runners he's he's kind of he's gearing down at second and Mullins gets it and doesn't field it clean and the ball comes out he already doesn't have a very strong arm so Maley recognizes that and ends up taking third and so that becomes big in the sense that Mailey ends up scoring on a wild pitch by Aiken. I will say this, and this may be unpopular because as much as I love him, it, it seemed like when the birds went down 10-7 to 7, um, and then you had Mailey on uh, third base, something like that where you call a, a curveball, and I'm not saying it's a good pitch, but I felt like Ad, Adley got a little lazy behind the plate 
and he tried to backhand a, a curveball that probably went 60 feet. You know, it didn't cover the, the other six inches. And it, as opposed to keeping that ball in front of him by blocking it, he kind of tried to backhand it, and it skipped off his uh, the heel of his glove, if you will. And then, you know, now it's 11-7. And that, that becomes a big, big issue because the birds in the bottom of the 10th ended up having two runners on, which means the tie and run comes to the plate. But because Benson scores on that wild pitch, now it's a four-run game, and the birds never got the tie and run to, run to the plate. And then, and then later on in the inning, uh, the 10th, he let another one. I think there was two strikes on the guy. Unfortunately, he didn't swing. But once again, you know, Ad tried to backhand it as opposed to getting in front of the baseball and, and blocking it like he does so well. He just kind of got lazy uh, behind the plate. I don't know. I don't know exactly what's going on. I feel like the thing that he's kind of getting into a little bit, and I and I'm very hesitant to say that because I admire him so much. I just felt like there was a, a couple of plays where he kind of, you know, didn't. He got lazy. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, fortunately, it only cost him one time. It didn't cost him twice. But I, I can imagine that, you know, somebody's going to say something to him eventually, because, uh, you know, two strikes, you got to keep the ball in front of you. Runner on third, there's almost no reason, you know, especially, you know, if it gets by you and you square up on the ball and it just bounces bad on on your chest protector. Hey, I get it, man. Okay, bad pitch, get it. But you start trying to backhand balls, you know, when you got a runner on third and you're trying to you're trying to, you know, stay as tight as you can for these kind of reasons, uh, I think that it's something that needs to be addressed before it becomes bad, bad habit. So once again, birds 48 and 31. Okay, they lose the last two to Cincinnati. Cincinnati's a good baseball team. Hey, congratulations to them. You gotta tip your cap. Um they got a pretty good baseball team. They got a pretty good baseball team. I think Baltimore does too. This is just an instance where, you know, it, it shows a couple of things that we need to address moving forward. You know, it'll be interesting to see how both of these teams do for the rest of the season because uh, Cincinnati is still riding high. If they've, they won 12 and then they lost their last two to Atlanta and then they lost the first one to Baltimore, so they're 12 and three. Well, now they're 14 and three. And I think most teams, I know most teams, they're going to take that all day. 14-3 and three over your last 17. I mean, that's a red-hot baseball team. And uh, they just happened to come into Baltimore on that high. So 11-7, <clears throat> to Cincinnati. Pains me to say it. At the same time, I tell you what, I am. I was excited to see these, these teams play. Um, like I said, it had been over 3,000 days since the Reds were in Baltimore. Uh, I don't know. This just kind of has a, a 70s, 80s nostalgia to it, if you will. You know, Even sitting here looking at the, the box score, it just looks good. Cincinnati, Baltimore. It just screams old school, just old school baseball, man. And uh, so I enjoyed this series. You know, Even though Baltimore only got one out of three, I enjoyed this series. It'll be interesting to see, like I said, the Reds for the rest of the year. I think that they're going to be a good baseball team. I think that they got a real good shot at making the playoffs. And I think likewise with Baltimore. <clears throat> it's the uh, bottom of the eighth. Uh, Arizona is still leading Tampa Bay. So um, they're three outs away from, from beating Tampa Bay, which would obviously bode well for the Birds. Uh, let's see, just to check on some scores before we get out of here. And this is 11:20 Eastern. <clears throat> if anybody's wondering, Yankees are up seven to nothing on the A's. Like I said, Arizona's beating Tampa Bay two to nothing right now. Uh, the Reds beat the Birds, <clears throat> and the Blue Jays won six to one. And I got Marlins over the Sox six to two. So, not really worried too much about those. The main concern right now is the is the Rays. Uh, hopefully, Arizona can hold that lead. And that'll keep Baltimore within four. And uh, they'll get a nice day of rest, get the bullpen reset. You know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll move on and we'll bring in Minnesota. And uh, we'll try to take two or three from them. Just a quick uh, understanding of where Minnesota's at right now. They're 40 and 42, currently second in the AL Central. They're a half game back of the Cleveland Guardians. And they're on a three game losing streak, four and six in their last 10. So, 
you know, they arrest. Great opportunity for the Orioles to welcome in a team that's not necessarily red hot like the Reds were. No pun intended. You know, get back in their, in their winning ways. So, hey, Bird's still got a lot to pr play for. Your heads up high, Baltimore. It's still a, a great, exciting season. And uh, everybody take a day of rest. I know I will be taking a day of rest because there have been many late nights sitting up and making these videos, including this one, and, and then followed by early mornings of going to work. So enjoy your day off. Unfortunately, it's not on a, on a, a day where we won, but enjoy your day off, man. And I look forward to seeing you guys later. Like I said, once again, like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment down in the comment section about how you think the series went, some of your favorite plays. I don't know, man. Ask me a question. Uh, just, hey, look forward to dealing with you guys, talking to you guys. Just leave a comment, like, share, subscribe. And at the end of the day, go Orioles.